This week, you'll learn how to synchronize your audio for DSLR using Final Cut Pro 10. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. This episode is brought to you by Adorama. If you're looking for photography, video, imaging, or tech needs, be sure to check out Adorama.com. Hi, my name's Rich Harrington, and welcome to this episode of DSLR Video Skills, brought to you by Adorama. Today, we're going to take a look at sync sound workflow in relation to Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to bring in a clip that we shot earlier and show you how to line up the audio. Now, if you didn't check it out, be sure to watch some of our earlier episodes where we explored the sync sound workflow from the point of view of what type of gear you needed. And then we had another episode where we explored the actual production process. Understanding how to shoot, plan, acquire for this type of material will make all the difference in the world. What I'm going to do now, though, is show you how to bring it into Final Cut 10 and get those clips lined up. I'm in Final Cut Pro 10, and let's start by making a new event. Now, I'll go to the hard drive that I want to work with, and what I need to do is generate a new event. The event is going to hold all of the footage from this particular shoot or from multiple shoots. Now, I'm going to import files. In this case, they're already transferred to the drive, so it's easy. And I'll just navigate to my drive. Here we go. And let's just jump in. And I'll go ahead and choose the event I want to use. In fact, I'll make a new event here. Let's call this Sync Sound Demo. There we go. I choose a target drive. In this case, I'm going to use the external storage. I'm using a Thunderbolt disk drive here. And I could choose, if I want, to copy the files into that folder. But since the media is on the same drive already, I'm not going to bother to remove it. Next, you have a couple of choices to make. Create Optimized Media is going to transcode the footage that you import. Now, DSLR source material is not necessarily the easiest to work with in Final Cut 10. The H.264 compression type or AVC HD formats that are often used for DSLR do put pretty high demands on the graphics card and RAM in your computer. Now, I'm using a very modern laptop here, so it's going to be able to handle it just fine. But if you're working on an older system, you might want to go ahead with that option to create optimized media. The good news is, is it will run in the background. So you'll use the original files as proxies to begin with, and then it'll swap out. The bad news is that those files are going to be a lot larger. So if you are going to go with this transcoded workflow, make sure you have adequate storage space. And because the files are bigger and beefier, you're going to need a higher performance hard drive, typically something like Thunderbolt, Firewire 800, ideally a 7200 or 10,000 RPM drive, and even potentially multiple drives in the same enclosure as a RAID 0 for performance. I'll go ahead here and choose the Optimize, just so you see how that works. And next, we have a couple of options. I'm going to choose Analyze for Balanced Color. This is going to take a look at the video file and will clean it up by giving me some automatic suggestions on how to properly white balance the shot. Typically, I shoot it the way I want it, but we'll turn this on just so you can see what the feature does. Very importantly here, I'm going to analyze the audio and that's going to make it easier. And we're going to split out the stereo files. The DSLR format tends to keep all the audio as a stereo file, even if you are running in audio separately. A lot of times, you're going to use a mixer on set or maybe a Zoom H4n. Now, the mixer is going to allow you to run the audio directly into the camera. And some people will loop the audio out of the external audio recorder into the DSLR too. Remember, in this case, though, we're doing a sync sound workflow, so we want to take that higher quality audio that was recorded externally. In this case, for the footage, I was using an external microphone, a microphone attached to the top of the camera, like a road mic, so I can go ahead and get better reference audio. I'm still going to split that out so it's easier to access, and it'll give me finer control. And we can go ahead and remove any silent channels if it exists. That looks good. I'll click Import and it's going to bring those files in. Okay, I've imported my clips. Now that analysis stage can take a good few minutes, especially if you chose to transcode, analyze the audio, analyze the video. Typically, you'll set this up at the end of the day or maybe over a weekend and then walk away. 
Now, you don't have to do these steps, but it does come in handy, particularly with our sync sound now. I've got my clips in my project, and let's just click on them, see a little bit about it. 18 seconds, 10 seconds, 16 minutes. That to me looks like it's probably the interview. 18 minutes, two minutes, little over a minute. My guess is that this is the bulk of our audio interview and this is the on-camera portion of that. Now I can go through and take a look at that clip and start to process it and you know you'll see as you do that there's the slate and I can actually do this the manual way but I don't need to. Final Cut can actually auto align for me. Alright, I think that's my interview and here's my sync sound. It says there's a couple of audio problems so let's jump on over and we'll take advantage of the loudness option here and it looks like it did a nice job normalizing that volume. It put a little bit of a boost in there and it's definitely the proper levels now. Now I would recommend that you actually shoot it and record it the right way but there's lots of things that can get in the way on a set to interrupt getting good levels. Alright, I've got that. Let's select those two clips and I'll choose Clip, Synchronize Clips. Now because that analysis has already been completed, this doesn't take too long. Now that icon in the corner is indicating that additional processing is occurring. I can click here and see what's happening. It looks like we have some transcoding here and it is actually synchronizing the clips. Now this process does take some time. So if I were to try to use this right now, it wouldn't be ready. Notice though, it does give me the progress indication and in a couple of minutes, this 18 minute interview will be synced. If you think that this process is a little slow for your liking, there are some alternatives. On set, you can go ahead and route the audio directly out of your mixer into the camera. Now, some cameras have limited input options and pulling this in is really not the ideal workflow, but you could take advantage of that. I'm also a big fan of Dual Eyes from Singular Software which allows you to analyze the audio and merge the clips before you ever import them into Final Cut 10. For me, this is a much faster workflow, but it is a couple hundred bucks that you may or may not want to spend. If you're using Final Cut 10, this functionality is built in, but it won't set any land speed records. Again, set it up for that analysis on import, and then choose synchronized clips, and go get dinner, go get home, go get a good night's sleep. When you come back the next day, it will definitely be done, but the more clips you have, the more time it takes. So we're just going to jump forward in time here for a second and take a look at the end results. Looks like it's finished. I can close that. You'll see that the little clock icon has gone away. And up here at the top, we have this little icon indicating a compound clip. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a new project to bring this in. And let's just bring that down to our timeline. There we go. You'll notice up at the beginning there that there are some black frames. That's because the audio recorder was rolling before the video recorder. There we go. Looks like it's lined up. Let's select the clip here and we can take a look at what's happening. All right, I see we've got our color correction already applied from the auto analysis. If I need to, I can make tweaks to that. Open up the exposure a little bit, a little more master saturation. Looks good. Let's go ahead and take a look here for the audio for that compound clip. And I see that there are two audio channels. Right now, they're both turned on. So you've synchronized the clips, but you still have to actually turn the bad audio off. Otherwise, you're going to get a weird echoing effect. And it's just not going to sound right. Let's leave it on for a second and play it back. All right, let's have a listen. We still know so little about. Imagine... What you just heard there was both audio sources. The reference audio which is the blue channel here that was on the clip originally, and the separate imported audio. Let's turn off the sync sound for a second and just listen again. Come see my film because you will learn 
about your long lost that relative. That should sound pretty hollow. But if I switch over to the sync sound source and disable the camera audio, come see my film because it you should will sound learn a lot better about your long lost relative. You will learn about a species. Pretty straightforward process. It works well. It's just not incredibly fast. But it's the sort of thing that once you get it done, it's ready to use. Now, I highly recommend that you do this as a batch operation. So import all the clips from your camera that have it, as well as the sync audio, and tell it to go ahead and analyze the clips for sound. When you've done that, it'll be a lot easier to do the synchronize. You can then lasso the clips. You don't even have to guess which one goes with which. You can just choose all your clips and all your audio files and then choose Clip Synchronize Sound. Once you've done that, it'll take several minutes per clip, but when it's done, it's done, and you will definitely have better audio. Remember, however, it's very important to go back and disable the reference audio. You do that by clicking on the compound clip, make sure that you're looking at the audio tab, and then just disable the reference audio, and you're in good shape. You could do this up here at the event level, or once you've added the clip to the timeline, the advantage of doing it at the event level is it will be global going forward. And I generally modify the clips up there so it's a more permanent change. All right, there you have it, a sync sound workflow with Final Cut 10. Be sure to check out some of those earlier episodes we recorded where we take a look at the essential gear as well as the production process so you have the complete picture. Thanks to Adorama TV, my name's Rich Harrington, and you'll want to also head over to the Adorama Learning Center where there's a ton of articles that you could check out all about microphones and professional production. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.